kicks him off. And Ramos, the first Purdue finalist since 2006, up against Pat Glory. It's the first meeting between these two. Glory from Princeton was a finalist last year, fell against Nick Suriano of Michigan in his final season. So Glory gets another chance, and Ramos is in the spot he believed he'd be in, but maybe not everybody else. This guy shocked the world last night. It was incredible. I saw a tweet yesterday that was pretty funny. It said, the only person in this arena happier than Matt Ramos is Pat Glory. <laughs> no one wanted to wrestle Spencer Lee this evening. He believes he has a true chance to win a national championship tonight. And Pat Glory just gets right in the single leg, just like he did on the semifinal match. And Ramos is a pretty good scrambler. If he can go ahead and keep position, get his cleft, his leg back. Look at how he sits up there, Coach. He elevates right away. High head, gets to the feet. Yeah, he, he can, if he can sweep this bottom leg here, he's got a chance to score. Gotta work his left arm around. Sweeps him back. Is it enough to go ahead and collect the points? No. Well, if you notice, his right arm is under the leg. Yeah. He needs that over top of the leg so he can elevate and show. Good sequence there, though, for Ramos, because that was right off of Glory's shot, right? He ends up in a scramble position, as you mentioned. Look at the right arm, not quite underneath it to the elbow. Does the sweep, and good reactions by Glory. Here Matt side tonight, I'm Mike Cousins, along with Jordan Burroughs, Jim Gibbons, our rules analyst, Rock Harrison, Quinn Kesnick tracking down the winner that they come off the mat. Glory looking to be Princeton's first champion since 1951. Ramos hoping to stand atop the podium for a Boilermaker for the first time since 1992, which was Charles Jones in Oklahoma City. Boy, Ramos has been stingy with this defense, now showing a little flexibility. Glory's in good position there, wasn't able to get the sweep. Look how high he's trying to get that left ankle up. Flexibility here, Coach. Flexibility. Yeah. Look at it. And, and that balance. leg is strong. Yeah. He keeps getting kicked in the back of the knee, almost tripped, almost falls down, but he's still poised in this bouncing on one foot. It's amazing. Through the roll, wow. Yeah. yeah. Anticipating wow. the roll through right here. Gets to that face shoelace position. Now he's got a little bit of an advantage. And I tell you what, Coach, if you're Pat Glory, this is wearing on you. Yeah, it is. You got close to a takedown multiple times in the first period of this match, and he just hits you with this Houdini-like <laughs> matchup. It's, it's just really tough for him right now. Good call on the stalemate there as the work back. Look at this, standing splits, basically. It's kicked in the leg, nothing. Post on the hand, look at the timing of this roll through. Roll, roll through. Looking for legs right away. Ramos, the redshirt sophomore, the equivalent of a human Gumby there, avoiding the takedown from Glory, the senior out of Randolph, New Jersey. A little bit different technique now for Glory, kind of standing a little bit higher, not necessarily looking for the legs on that shot, just like you mentioned, Jordan. Wearing on him a little bit, not really looking for a shot like he did early in the semifinal match where he got to the single leg right away. Absolutely, Coach. So as a wrestler, you want to be rewarded for your hard work with points. So if you're putting a lot of output out there and it's not being rewarded with points on the scoreboard, that starts to play into your psyche a little bit. Yeah, a little more of a shallow shot there. Now Ramos kind of feeling it here. You see him starting to take a little territory. Working off that elbow tie. You can just see how the tempo of this match has changed here with that scramble, as you mentioned. The shots on is deep. Great first period by both men. Ramos, the first time finalist, Glory. One of two Princeton wrestlers, Jim, to reach the finals twice. John Orr, class of 1985 in that season, lost to Joe Gibbons in the finals. Imagine that. <laughs> I like your facts, though. John Orr is a really good wrestler. Excellent uh, side tilt wrestler. My brother was pretty good too. Championships run in that family. One nothing glory started the second. Ramos of Purdue, their first All American since 2013. Now Ramos has a pretty good low shot. If you go ahead and attack below the knee, usually we'll do it from space. He's able to hit that on Spencer Lee in the dual meet, kind of right off the bat. But you can see his vision really isn't looking for a shot there, champ. He's just 
little high there, not yeah, necessarily looking the, below the knee. If you look at that right leg, yeah. well, he's staying in a square stance. It's hard to penetrate Green from a square stance. Green. And there you see the stall on the board because Corey's done most of the work this match. And, and what I see from Ramos is that he just wants to get you in positions upper body. He wants to throw you. He wants to front head pinch you. He wants to hit you with something Russell unorthodox and Russell make you uncomfortable. Yeah, that head pinch situation with a collar tie high on the elbow. He's willing to go double elbows and has a good lateral drop. But again, I don't think Ramos has hit a knee yet this match. No. Well, he hit a knee on the roll through. <laughs> Both these guys are settling for a high position. Good single leg there. Good position there. Better angle there for Glory to attack. Now he shoves the leg. He's got that head up. Yep. Now he's going through the roll through. Oh, we're looking for back, coach. No, he's got his belt buckled with the mat. And he's got that ankle hooked up on the far side right there. Can he drive through? He's lost his power. Short time in the second with just four seconds to go as Glory tries to finish. And the period comes to an end. Wow. The escapability of Ramos in so many positions is impressive. This guy is a magician. Wow, look at the roll. Almost on his back, gets his hips up. His core is strong. And look, he's looking for a finish here. And Pat Glory just continues to wrestle. Still has been unable to find points, but he's really put in the referee's mindset that he's the aggressor. He's working harder. He's already got a single stall call. Well, with the strategy, though, Glory was able to go ahead and get the escape. Now, nice shot again. It's in another shot with the lead. Trying to do another fish in here. Just go ahead, come over the top and get into the back. But we've seen where Ramos has been pretty effective. Well, Coach, how, how long can Ramos do this? How long can you just work to defend? Well, he's got it. Your question has been answered. Two for Glory. Right there. And Glory still got him in position. He's not out of trouble yet here. He's not out of trouble yet here. And there's a reason why Ramos didn't shake the bottom position there because Glory's really tough in the top position. He's been able to turn a lot of guys in this tournament. Wanted to avoid the strength of Glory. Minute to go, third period. Three nothing, Glory on top. Inside wrist ride right there. Trying to get a little scramble situation. Looking for one swipe. He's not. Matt Ramos is not going to go down easy. He's going to go ahead and try to hit something big here. Look, trying to get off the mat right now as they go out. But we're going to see something wild is guaranteed. Incredible. Incredible, Coach. Well, Gloria's found himself in this position a few times in the mat. Look at it. He goes for the forward roll, but luckily he lands in a position where he's got that call on the opposite side, and he can cover the hips and get the two points. He's leading 3-0. Look for Glory to try to finish this match on top. He doesn't want to get back to his feet because we saw last night what Ramos can do when he's on his feet. Yeah. He can control the roll from here. And that was an important part of that match last night was those escapes to get in this position right here. And that's a good one to take, Coach. That's yeah. a wise move right there if I'm Pat Glory. And you don't want to push into him in that chest wrap position. You don't want to push into Ramos in that chest wrap position because that's where things can go awry for you really quick. So just skill level was high. The aggressiveness was high. The single legs, the finishes, not all of them were there, but a lot of action there for Glory. And he's going to walk away with a national championship. Well, he's going for the head pinch again, coach. He's looking no, for that head pinch no, again. No, not this time. Yep. One second left on the clock here for Pat Glory. Princeton's last champion, Brad Glass, 1951. That was I Love Lucy's first year on TV. Joe DiMaggio's last in the majors. And the drought is over for the Princeton Tigers. Pat Glory is number one. And when you when you lose on this stage like Pat Glory did last year against Nick Siriano, it's the loneliest walk ever outside of this arena and out of that tunnel. So when you get an opportunity to do it again the following year like he's done, and you're wrestling a guy like Matt Ramos who pulled the big upset, beat Spencer Lee, the guy who you didn't want to face, and now he gets to get crowned a champion. This is an amazing, amazing thing. Congratulations to Pat Glory. Look at this Princeton corner. 
Yep. Princeton's got themselves a national champion. They've got themselves a program, guys. They do. Bringing home national champions. Chris Ayers doing a fantastic job there. Joe Dubuque in the corner, the two-time national champion. He spent a lot of time with his man there at Bat Glory. Serves to get the first hug. And, and how do you build a program? You need a trailblazer. You need someone to do it first. A guy like Pat Glory, now the program is in a great position. Quinn. Yelling to your coaches, we did it, we did it. They said, no, you did it. You did it. We did it. They like to give me all the credit, but it's not possible without the community around me. Man, I have so many people to thank. I can't thank them all in this one video. But thank you, everyone. You know who you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. You all made this possible. Thank you. Contrast this night a year ago with this moment right now. Yeah, walking off the siege. Thank you, thank you. This is the worst feeling in the world. I just wanted to come out here and prove to everybody that I can do it. And that Pat Glory is a national champion. And I can truly say that we did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I love that. Oh. Oh my God. There's just nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. 1951, the last time the Tigers had a national champion. 1951. Your parents probably don't even remember 1951. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that picture on the wall since I was before freshman going to RTC practices. I just dreamed of like, moving them over a little bit, man, making some room for me. And, Man, I wish Quincy was with me in this in this finals, but man, I'm just so glad we could do it. Um, I hope it's it's you know a theme to come for Princeton Tigers. Congratulations, Pat! You set the tempo and you finished them off. Thanks, Quinn. Great job. Thank you very much. Go Tigers, baby!